God, we just thank you so much for Christy and Jamie in. You know, we are greatly indebted to you just for giving them to us and all the blessings that we have been given because of them. And I just pray right now that you will them of yourself and that you speak to them powerfully. Amen. Amen.
to be able to talk to you guys and give you an opportunity to relate. Um, and it was hard to choose, and I'm looking now, and I'm still not sure which one I'm going to use. But um, Jesus changes lives, and he's been doing it for a long time. That's right. And he's not done. Yeah. That's right. He's not. Um, you know, one I just think that came to my mind when I was thinking about the Gospels is just um, Matthew, one of Jesus' 12 apostles. And he was a tax collector. And if you guys don't know what that was, he was working for the Roman government. But he was Jewish, okay? And and probably pretty greedy, um, maybe cheated people out of their money, but Jesus came and he gave him an opportunity, he included him um, and gave him the opportunity at a kingdom life and it changed him. He came and he asked him to follow him and he did and his life was changed. He's a hero of the faith. He got to witness the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. Um, I think about a girl that I lived with in college, her name's Autumn, and um, she's one of my dearest friends, and was a team like you guys that came to this camp, and um, she came because she had a connection with somebody here in Colorado, and they brought her, and didn't know anybody. She came, and, and she sat amongst the teens in this room, and she, Autumn is very beautiful. She is a beautiful girl. And she was always dressed really pretty and really cute and had lots of makeup on, and she was always with the boys. And, um, and God, I'm going to try not to emotional. God changed her. Um, he gave her a vision for a community of people that love Jesus, and she caught that vision. And her life was changed, guys. She is. Um, a disciple who is living a sold out life. She moved from Colorado where all her family was to Texas to go to college at a community college um, so she could be a part of a kingdom community. And she's on staff with Focus now and she is just a testimony to Jesus changing lives. I'm going to talk about her some more <laughs> in a little bit. But um, the other person I just wanted to talk about is my other um, dear friend Sarah, and she was um, another friend I lived with in college. She was also at my wedding, and um, she is super talented. If you don't know her. She is incredibly talented, and and she was living for herself, and she was living to be a star, to be famous. She could be. Um, she's an incredible actress, and she came to Focus. And um, I met her my freshman year, or no, my sophomore year. And um, after coming to Focus for a semester and falling in love with Jesus, uh, she had been in a show and had to miss an entire semester of Focus. And she, I remember having a conversation with her. And she just told me, I can't do this anymore. I can't miss out on this community. Um, and so after that, she uh, decided to change her major and to not be in any more shows because it's exactly what Ronnie was talking about this morning. If you want to have a spiritually productive life, you've got to be involved in a community of believers. Yeah. Right. You have to. Okay? I'm going to go this long on this point. Sorry. Um, so what are you living for right now, and how does Jesus want to change that? This is about surrender. You have to surrender your heart and your life to him, and he will change you. That's it. Okay? All right, I'm going to hand it over to Christine. <coughs> Okay, I need Emily Guerrero to come up. Let's give her a big, great big hand. Emily Let's welcome Miss Tim. Come back up here. We're going to give you a second chance. Come on. Come up here. 
singing. I'm not going to do anything bad to you. Yeah. All right. We're going to put these on. And uh, this because you live a very busy life full of yourself. Can you read that?
are saved. You are going to inherit the kingdom of God. You are co-heirs of Jesus Christ. What's a co-heir? <coughs> what? Hello, kingdom, heaven, all the earth. We get to share that. Second reason is I want you to write down my future is secure. My future is secure. I don't know about you, but when I was 15, 16, I used to talk to my friends. And I'm not kidding, whether it was about boys or just whatever, I'd say, man, I just wish I had, what are those things called when you look in and can see your future? Crystal ball. Amen. Yeah. I'd say, man, I wish I had a crystal ball. I always wanted to know where I was going. I was so lost. I just needed a map. I really was so lost. It's the reason I moved to Texas. You guys know why I moved to Texas? It's because I was running away. Not from my parents, but from my despair of where I was in my life. So just the fact that when you live a life and Jesus is your only answer, your future is secure. Bing. Does that make you guys like fired up? Amen. Okay, let's applause. I want you to write down, my guide is reliable. Mm, that's your guide is reliable. Jesus is your guide. You don't have to think. All you have to do is follow. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is follow. Super, super easy. Be the prettiest. Have the best body. 
be the most talented. See, those are all about self. Okay, but God gives us a vision for the ministry of reconciliation. Do you guys know what it means to be reconciled? Anybody? To be made right to restore something. <coughs> Susan, can you put up 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 19? He is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. He's committed it to us. It's our job now. He trusts us. He gives us the opportunity to work alongside him. Um, told you I was going to tell you about Autumn again. She was up here at camp um, right after her senior year, and another dear friend of mine, um, Brianna, uh, had met her and had known her from, I think, a, a previous camp year before I think she had come to, but um, I can remember, I wasn't at camp that year, and I remember Brianna texting me from camp saying, hey, pray about this girl, Autumn. I think God wants her to move to Texas, but I haven't told her that yet. And so she told me, I, I asked her today to refresh my mind because I couldn't remember the whole story, but um, she told me, she was sitting in here in this room next to Autumn and was praying the entire talk, the entire praise and worship, just asking God um, to give her courage to talk to Autumn and that he would change her life after this night. And that she would have the courage to move away from her family and be a part of a community that was radical and sold out for Jesus. So she spent the whole night praying about that. Sorry for her was talking that night. She probably wasn't listening to you. She's praying. Um, but the cool thing is, so she, she was saying, yeah, and then God just kept telling me, go talk to her after the talk. Go talk to her. Go talk to her. And she was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go talk to her. And then Autumn came up to her and said, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and um, they had a conversation, and, and Brianna told her at the end of the conversation, God wants you to move to Texas. And I can't imagine what I would do if somebody told me to move across the country. Um, but the cool thing is, is that Autumn had caught a vision here to be used by God. And she knew that if she wanted to be used by God, she was going to have to plug in. And she was going to be a part of the community. And so she did. She moved. And she is being used by God in powerful ways. God. She also is here because Autumn moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Autumn's older sister didn't say it. The same thing can happen for her. Same situation presented itself. Um, but... Guys, this is what we're talking about. When God comes now, give you a better answer. Yeah. Okay? We're trying to get you to think differently this week. That's what we're doing, okay? Um, when we have these visions about ourselves and the things that we want to accomplish, you just look like the world. You're conforming to the pattern of this world. But we're talking about being transformed. Does anybody know how we're transformed? By the renewing of our mind. Are learning to think differently. Okay, the new way of thinking is surrender. Yeah. Surrender your lives to God. You see, it's an honor to be used by God. Amen. I'm not burdened by it. Um, I'm indebted to Him, and it's not a burden. I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful for what he's done for me. And all I want to do is serve him. Amen. He's changed me. And when I see the need other people have for him, I have to be a part of that. Uh, the last thing I was just going to say about this is, I think it's the first day we were singing Days of Elijah. And that song gets me pretty much every time. Um, for different reasons at different times, but... You know, I always picture Jesus coming. And I think it gets me because 
Um, just in the last couple years, I have really learned to long for Jesus and to long for him to come back. Um, as you get older, you just start to see some of the hurt and suffering that goes on. And it's just so painful. Sometimes you just want him to come back. And I've had such a hard time without him being Jim here this week. It breaks my heart. Shannon is one of my greatest friends, and I've been so blessed to get to know her the last couple years. And, and when I think about, I was listening to that song and talking about some time of trial and fathom. I'm sorry, let me read it. Powerful. These are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. So we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare be the way of the Lord. Guys, if I can't do with Jesus, then I want to work with him. I want to be a part of bringing his kingdom here Amen. to people like Haley. God wants to use you guys. Let him use you. Have a vision for that.
That's the problem. That's the problem. And you stop growing. Um, can someone tell me what sacrifice means? To give something up. To give something up. So I want you to write this down. Sacrifice fuels the fire of victory. Sacrifice fuels the fire of victory. It starts with giving up stuff. Denial of self. So I want you to think right now, because there's probably a laundry list, I want you to think of just simply one thing that you feel like Jesus is calling you to give up. I mean, some of you might have been like, think. Um, Maya, I hope you don't mind me sharing about you, but when I was thinking, I wanted to think of, of a teenager that that I knew that had sacrificed for God. Um, Maya George, raise your hand, she came to this camp last year for the first time. And same thing, it's the same story. I mean, Rob, you've probably experienced a little bit of this. I know that Blair has experienced this. When you are not a part of our church, and all of a sudden you're on this bus with a million people that you don't know, and all these adults, and everyone's excited. You don't know what to be excited about, and you just really feel odd man out. And Maya came last year, and she was already a believer. She is um, someone that I look up to. And how they, she is 15 years old. And Maya, I look up to you. I don't look down at you. I look up to you. And let me tell you why. She came here and she was our she already knew the Lord, loves the Lord. Maya loves the Lord. Maya is this. Jesus, Jesus. I mean, everywhere. She walks in the gym, she's Jesus. She goes to her school, she's Jesus. And she started to feel, now I want you to think about this. Her family goes to a, a big church in Wyoming. And, and Maya felt super convicted and called by God. God gave her a vision to leave her family church and, and come to church at Northeast. And Michaela, Michaela, raise your hand. You don't know this, or maybe you do. This is Michaela's best friend. She was not here last year. Her biggest struggle was that she was going to leave you there because she had just started reaching out to you. And showing you Jesus. And she said, you know, am I going to leave her there, my family? And she, she sacrificed. And man, her fire has fuel. I get to look at that face every Sunday morning because she was called and she obeyed. Amen. And I thank you for that. And look who's sitting next to her. See what God does? Right. And guess who else came? You. Brock. Yeah. Brock. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, this is what God does when he calls you and you sacrifice. It's like Ronnie said, I thought, did God tell you what was going to happen? He said, go. She dropped her net and she went. So here's a little piece of the story is when she came, I said, um, hello, Michaela's here now. Weren't you so worried about that? Look what God took care of it. I know that Maya, and I'm so sorry, but I know that Maya deeply loves Brock, and I know that she has a desire for Brock to love the Lord so fiercely, and I don't know if you knew that, but Brock got on the bus not wanting to come. And I have seen God move in you, man. I have watched you from day one. Kind of going, what the heck am I doing here? And I have seen him grow. That's what sacrifice says. That's what sacrifice says. Um, having a vision costs you everything. You guys hear this, but do you know what everything means? It's everything. 
but you will never, ever regret your decision. That's right. That's true. Ever. My Christian walk has been hard, but I would not trade this walk in to walk in this world. Mm -hmm. Period. Thirdly, we have to pay the price now. So it costs you something. It's got to be now. And I want to read you this scripture. Susan, you can put that up. In and I re I've read this scripture before, but I read the message version of it, and, and I love it because this is an interaction where I think that Jesus is very clear that he's got a plan. He asks you to go. You don't dilly-dally. You go. Okay? So I'm going to read it to you. On the road, someone asked if he could go along. I'll go with you wherever, he said. So isn't this what we do? You know, we're like up here and we're like, we'll, we'll do whatever, man. We'll give it up. We'll give up whatever. So I love this. Jesus was hurt. Are you ready to rough it? So think of this guy's like, man, I'll do anything. He's like, are you ready for some help? So we're not staying in the best inns, you know. Jesus said to another, follow me. He said, certainly, but first, excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have to make arrangements for my father's funeral. Jesus refused. First things first, your business is life, not death. And life is urgent. Announce God's kingdom. Then another said, I'm ready to follow you, Master, but first excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. Jesus said, no procrastination. No procrastination. No backward looks. None of this, you know, keep your eye and you're going. And it's like, huh, what? What? Every time you do that, what am I doing? I'm standing still. Everything stops. So no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. So the time is now. Um, William, can you come on up? This whole vision is serious deal. You're not you're not writing a poem. I mean, you're not just putting some some um, cheap words on a paper. We're talking, you're making a commitment. Hello, Mr. Visionary. Oh, I see that you're God's man. You've got courage. Ooh. <laughs> you're a kingdom worker. When you choose Christ, he will give you a clear vision. Clear. Clear vision goes on. Okay. And I want you to read this. Yes. I'm part of the fellowship of the unshamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. Amen. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed vision, worldly talking, cheap giving, and dwarfed goals. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I won't give up, shut up, let up until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up for the cause of Jesus Christ. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till everyone knows, work till he stops me, and when he comes for his own. 
he will have no trouble recognizing me because my banner will have been clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you get it? Do you get it? That's that's a vision. Mm -hmm. That's a vision. And you know, we guys, we can just talk about it all night, and we can just do this camp, and you can just go back and then cheat wise. Or you can decide, start coming up with a plan, surround yourself with believers, go to church. There's a lot of believers there. Yeah. Praise your God. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice. Get rid of stuff. Go to youth group. Get rid of some of your friends. Okay, there's just a handful of things that can start you off. But, you know, either you're going to come, you know, spend your year looking through this, you know, or, you know, it's just going to be a bunch of bull malarkey just covered. Cruddy, cruddy, cruddy. You come back crusty. I'd rather take you back here next year and grow you in power instead of spending most of the shit in the crust off. But you know what? If you're crusty, come back because we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Amen. Yeah. I'll do it until I die. I'm in the crust removing business. <laughs> and I start with myself. Because I am imperfect and the only thing good at me is Jesus. Alright, let's pray. <coughs> God, we are so incredibly thankful for, for the vision that you give your people because there's just none like it. God, I, I am incredibly thankful for Jesus. I don't get you, and I don't get your plan, but I thank you for the clear, concise, obedient, surrendered, perfect life that Jesus lives so that we can look at that and have a clear vision for our own lives. And, and Lord, I would just ask in the name of Jesus in front of all of the angels, in the heavenly realm, in whatever that looks like, that you would send your spirit in a mighty way on this place and that lives were changed and that lives were conformed and that you would do powerful, powerful work through every single person in this room if they choose you. God, I pray for the adults in this room, that you would send us wisdom, Please. servanthood, forgiveness and grace as we love on, on your kids. Give us endurance to finish the race. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for Ronnie's dream. And his obedience in the way that he keeps going. I thank you for this camp. And I thank you just simply for the opportunity to be yours. I just pray that you'll be with us and that you'll send us out, that we'll drop our nets, and that we'll go. And in all this, just want to give praise again to Jesus and